We haven't done this for a long time, um, so let's uh, um, log on to Code Signal and let's see if there is any new challenge. Let's do continue the arcade. Well, in the intro. Um, Dark Wilderness, I think we completed, that's right. So we're at Eruption of Light. Election winners. Let's read the problem. Elections are in progress. Given an array of numbers of votes given to each candidate so far, an integer k equal to the number of voters who haven't cast their vote yet. Find the number of candidates who still have a chance to win this election. Okay. Um, so, for example, if it's two, three, five, two. K equal three, the output should be, um, there are two, all right. So how do you define, um, how do you define? Um, so if two or more candidates receive the same maximum number of votes, assume there is no winner at all. Um, this means we have to check. So for example, this two right here, if uh, it received this uh, K votes, is still less than the maximum of that. Um, less than or equal to the maximum of that, then it has no chance. So right now, so for example, I think it would only test with directly implemented it here. We essentially, we need to find the number of entries in this list of which when being added with this three still smaller than the current maximum. Okay, so let's do um, current max equals max uh, votes. And we want to find a list So we basically we say um, we we need to find a list so we can do a list comprehension. Uh, the the candidates let's say uh, let's just say candidate equals um, one for I. I I I should do this as. I should do S plus um, K for S in votes. S plus K if it's greater than the max current max. Okay. And then we return the sum of this array. And we return sum of candidates. Okay, let's try. So if it doesn't work, this is like a warm-up exercise. If it doesn't work, let's go back to Visual Studio and let's try to debug what happens. Okay, so... Test passed five out of six. Oh, interesting. Uh, so most tests are right, but this is wrong. It's because um oh <laughs> okay 
we only need to add if k equal equal to zero, we return. Um, and if there is a single max, oh, this is interesting. So, uh, all right. So um, the current max, uh, if k is zero, we need to check. Um, we need to check whether there are no tie. So there should be no, there, there, there should be no ties. There should be only one such thing. So uh, winner equals, okay. So candidate equals or S in votes. All right. Um, so if how should we return? Do we return anything? Um, so how do we return? The, the last candidate, only two candidates can win output. Um, integer so i think it, it, it should be output is zero so if there are multiple winners um we just do zero um if a sum candidate so we should return the sum so we should return um sum of candidates equal equal to one okay uh oh yeah that it it should not be boolean so if uh okay so if further if uh can uh if sum of candidate um is one okay we return one, else we return, whoop, what happened? We return zero. And now here's another big else, so else, um, we do that, let's run the test again. Syntax error, oh. Okay, let's sum it. Oh, correct. All right, it's it's not too bad this problem. Um, let's check some of the best solutions. So I, I I use too many if. I I don't like it. I don't like my solution. Let's check the best solution. So m equals max of v. M is like uh, my current max. So return uh, V count M if it's one. Oh, okay. I should use this. Yeah. So this part is counting how many elements uh, in in the maximum. It's essentially my solution. Like if the sum of a list comprehension is one, but right here it's using the list count. So let me start a file here.
Um, so let's start a new file. So right now, uh, let's try this. So votes equals two, three, one, three, four. And uh, let's print votes. So for example, if I have a I have an element that appeared twice in this list, this will give us the number of times. So for example, if we set another list, let's do this A, B, A, S, and let's print. A count. A. All right. So the first one prints three appeared twice, and A appeared twice. Let's do A. Let's do A. So for example, it's right now it's two three. Okay. Let's go back. Um. Let's do next task. Is Mac forty eight address input string? Uh, this is another. So we did uh, we did earlier. It's IPv four address. Uh, there are some tricky things about it. Um, it says a media uh, gain uh, access control address Mac address. Oh, Mac is stands for media access control. First time today I learned. Uh, is a unique identifier assigned to a to network interfaces for communication on physical network segment. Okay, um, right here it's zero. Uh, basically, it's okay. It's hexadecimal digits. Why hyphens? Your task is to check a given string input string whether corrects to MAC forty eight address or not. Basically, each group has to has um, two hexadecimal digits. For example, um, I'm expecting input string, not a MAC48 address. The input is false. Okay. Input string is something like that. Zero, zero, two. G is false. Okay. So if you have G, it's going to be false. If they're the single part of the string, oh, it's hidden. Okay. Um, first, I want to try um, the new thing I learned from Code Signal is let's do uh, let's copy down the uh, the problem description. For example, this is the input string, and we want to split it using um, so split string is input string split. We use a hyphen, and let's check what so uh, how it split string is. Mm. 
Yep, for example, it's right here. So we need to check after the split whether each of them um, So we need need to first first of all we need to have one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to have six groups right here, like this. And each of the group are hexadecimal digits of two uh, two digits. Which means we gotta check. So first we have to check. So right now I'm directly implement the code. Um, First, we have split string equals input string split using a hyphen. We we need to check it. It had the the length of it is six. So if uh, the length of this split string is not six, um, so for example, so the length of it. Split string. Oops. Um, six. So it's false. But if if it's not six, when it's not six, uh, we should uh, just uh, return return false. So is not six or. After we split, the length of it is not six. Or we'll say the maximum. So it, we we have to make sure like uh, every uh, thing is uh, has length too. So for example, we should return the length str is length s uh, for s in split str and uh, uh, we should check this so for example we should check len str if we need to check whether this uh, uh, len string is all two so for example um, this len string should be all two right otherwise uh, then we're bad my bad Len str, it should be all two. So we need to check whether everything or length of it is two. And uh, um, and we need all of them to be two. So for example, right now, len string is all true because uh, every length is equal to two. And we only need, we need to make sure all of them is true. So we need to do, do this. Um, I, I I think I should be unequal, right? <laughs> I should use this. Okay. So if any of it uh, is not, we just return first, and o otherwise we continue. Okay, so uh, we continue. And then we need to check every single of its letter. Uh, is in uh, uh, zero to nine and a to e. Okay. So um, I believe we can use ord. What's ord of zero? Uh, oh, string. <clears throat> My bad. So it should be zero. So it's forty-eight. And nine, if we add nine, it should be, um, so it's a, 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 we should add 10 of it. So it's, uh, I assume it's uh, 58, 57, my bad. Oh, it's plus nine. Okay, of course. Um, and then what's a capital A to capital E? Uh, 65. I wonder if I can use a, uh, uh, Little case later, letter because uh, their ordinance are different. So false. Okay, okay. they they have some sort of this thing. Okay. Um. 
So A to F. 65 to 70, 48 to uh, 40. Okay, we need, then we need to, uh, else we do this. So four. For S in, um, split string. Uh, we need to check ev every single S. So, uh, so right now, uh, if, uh, so right now every single S in this list string should have length too. So it, it's safe to check, like, uh, uh, we, we need to check if, uh, uh, S1, if odd. Um, I forgot if I can use Python, use this, so for example. Can I, can I do that? So for example, if S is uh, is five, so can I do S spots? All right, good. So uh, I want to I want my ordinance uh, for each string. So uh, so is first string we should do. Uh, so if uh, the ordinance, so ordinance has to be um, both of them are in that range. Okay. So we need to check a range. Maybe maybe we should write a sub function. So uh, we we check range. Uh, check ord. Uh, we do s. Um, so we basically we we assume this uh, this S is a uh, length uh, two string. All right. Uh, what happens is uh, they both of them has to be in. Uh, so for example, is uh, um, so if do. Is first letter good? Is first good? Should be um, the ordinance of the first S zero. It should be it should be in uh, um, which one? Forty eight to um, it should be in forty eight um, to fifty seven. Or it should be in sixty-five to seventy. It should be in uh, sixty-five to uh, seventy. And we just copy. Uh, uh, we just copy this, and we call it a second good. <laughs> Ah, uh, so in second, good. Okay. And then we return is first good and is second good. Let, let's copy this function to see in, in VS Code to see if it's good. So for example, Let's print check odd. Should I use camel case? Maybe I should. Check odd. Okay. Um, so for example, let's do zero e. So it's true. Um, how about check odd g zero? It's false. Okay, so right, right now this is good. Oh, let's change this to camel. 
case. Um, so for S, then we need to check something like that. Um, so is string, is input good? Is then be simply we check each, each string in the split string is good. So we do check or um, S for S in split string. And all of right now, then we return all of them is good. Return all is input good. Okay, so this is my implementation. Now let me explain. Um, this function right here, check word is uh, we basically we check the ordinance. Um, it returns a Unicode code point for one character string. Okay, so. Given this lens to string, for example, it's zero two, uh, zero six, whatever. Uh, we need to check whether they are within these range. So this is uh, this is zero to nine, and uh, um, and this is uh, the the second one should be in uh, sixty five to seventy. Okay, and then uh, we're back to the main function. The main function after this check. Uh, we need to check uh, what so uh, single each single of it is in this range okay for example right here so for example we have a BG right here the G is not in this range then it should there is a, a, a false there is a false uh, then there is a false in this uh, is input uh, list now, if we return all of this input good, it basically it has to be all true. If there is one false, then we return false. Now let's run test. Okay, so test passed 10 out of 10, and let's submit to see if there is like more tricky part that may be in the data set. Oh, it passed. Okay, so I guess uh, it um, there is no extra like a tricky business I have to deal with. Um, eruption of light level complete. Let's try to see what's Pi 3. Oh my God, this is another, this is another use RE. So I, I don't have RE um, here installed in my local Conda distribution. Let's see if there is a sim simple one uh, here. Okay. Um, okay, I see, I see. So, uh, he's using try except, but let me just copy down his answer. Essentially, it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, return false INTS. Okay, this is this is his answer, and uh, this is my answer. But essentially, essentially, uh, they are the same. But he's using try except. Um, try except basically uh, won't. So if you have a try uh, in the try, if uh, um, if there if there is an error, so sometimes uh, we may encounter errors, and then the Python uh, stopped. So try except the good thing about try except is you can try um, all of these. So when you encounter error, uh, it becomes except. And uh, for example, if you encounter error, basically return false. Um, th this is not bad. Okay. So because uh, if it so here in in INTS sixteen. So for example. So let's try this INTS. Uh, zero e sixteen. Okay, so um, if I have zero g sixteen, I believe it gives me error. Yes, exactly. Okay, invalid literal for int was base sixteen. All right. So basically, uh, this will give us error if you have something like g. So like I said. If you have a regular Python program, you do try except, 
uh, I'm sorry, you do not do try except, um, and you encounter, you put S as zero G here, you will get an error here. You will get an error, but then the Python stopped. Like, uh, it tells me, okay, for example, value error here. But for try except, the good thing about try except is you can have error in the try block. Once you encounter error, it goes to the accept block. And for example, here it's essentially saying if this goes wrong, we return false. I mean, it's it's uh, it's essentially the same code with mine because here I have to keep track of uh, uh, everything. I think this is a more Pythonic implementation. This is a better Im implementation. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, so we've finished this, uh, um, we finished what? Um, we finished the eruption of light module and uh, uh, we are in the last two module. Um, the, the, I guess it's a basics intro. Uh, it's a rainbow of clarity. Okay, so we have four problems. Is digit line encoding chestnut and delete digits? Let's try. Determine if a given character is a digit or not. What? <laughs> it's that simple. Symbol zero, symbol that. Symbol is zero, it's what? It's false? It should be true, right? Why the symbol zero is false, but symbol zero is true? What am I reading? Oh, this is letter O. Oh my God, this is so bad. Okay, this is letter O. Symbol one is true. Do we have, did, I mean, do we have a, uh, okay. Um, do we have a double digit symbol? We essentially, we basically, we just return like, a, like we did earlier here. We essentially return whether the word of the symbol is in 48 to 57, that's it. It's that simple. We only have a single digit symbol. Then this, this problem is too easy, is it? Okay. I, I mean, I, I've assumed I would assume every single one uses the same, right? Uh, come on. Okay. I assume every single. Oh, is digit. <laughs> okay. I, I, yes. I, I should just check this. This is even simpler. But this problem is like too easy. Okay. Um. Here. It says, given a string, return its encoding defined as follows. First, so let me copy down. That, that problem was too simple, but this one, I assume it's more difficult. Let's copy down right here. Um, so it says, given a string, return its encoding defined as follows. First, the string is divided into least possible number of disjoint substrings consisting of identical characters. Um, for example, uh, A, A, B, 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 C is divided into A, A, B, B, and C. So next, each substring with length greater than one is replaced with a concatenation of its length and repeating character. Um, hmm. Oh, it's 2A3B. Okay. 
So for example, even here we have two A, we can we cannot simply just put two A right there because they are not um, they're not the same. We 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 need um, we need some sort of a split thing. So the trick the trick part of this question is we we need to write down a function that uh, gives us so for example let, let's do this so s equal that um so for example s equal this we need to extract um I'm not very good at string. Let's check again or well, what strings functions associated with split lines. Uh, what's that? S split lines. Okay. An integer required got type string of split lines. Let's do two. What? Um, how about one? So how about five? So what does string split lines do? I'm not sure, but apparently it doesn't help. Uh, encode. What's encode? No encoding. Uh, uh, encoding argument not must be string. So, for example, if I do a here, uh, unknown encoding a. Okay. It's not that straightforward. Let's let's Google what is a string encoding uh, uh, Python. Python string encode. Uh -huh. The encoding is a Unicode. I see. So uh, it's totally different, ir irrelevant uh, to the problem here. I think I think we need to uh, check. Uh, let, let me also check what is the split lines. Um, let's check string split lines. Python. It says split lines takes maximum of one parameter. If keep end is provided and true, the line break also included. Ah, I see. So you need some line breakers right here. Um, I see. So, um, okay. Then it doesn't work. We have to, I, I think I have to manually uh, implement the split for this. Okay. So I, I think one simple way of doing this is simply we, we just run for loop. Okay, so for i in range uh, length of s, okay? So we basically, we, we basically, um, for example, here is uh, we have initially an empty string, right? So we have an empty string. Oh, I shouldn't use s. So let let's do this input str. And let's change this to input str. Um, s. So what happens is we need to ch check if the 
if in the index, in the first index, we need to check whether it agrees with the one next to it. Um, whether it agrees with the one next to it. And how do we do that is, I mean, we can simply write a for loop, right? So for example, right here, it's for, uh, then we do input string, um, the ith entry. So we need to compare the consecutive ones. So right here, let's do that. Um, and while, So i is the same, is equal to input string i plus one, then we have to do minus one here. So while this is true, um, I think s, s should be zero. Okay, so for example, we start with the first string, and if and while uh, they are the same, oh, I should put this outside, I guess. So while um, the input, maybe I should do, maybe I shouldn't do I. Let, let's keep track manually. So while i is uh, zero, which i is our index, um, and while i is that, we do s join um, input string. Um, so input string uh, i plus one. Okay. And then we add one to i, and we cannot have i exceeds our length of the string. So while i is less than um, the length of the string. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, and uh, um, if it's not, if it's not, uh, we just uh, append S to it. So this only produces a, a string that has some consecutive same letters, but uh, we need still to add this S to uh, a, a list. So uh, S list is empty list first. And uh, um, while that, okay, um, I think it's, it's better to use four. Let me, let me change it to four. For i in uh, range len of s, and if this is good, minus one. Um, so if that's true, then we just s join with that. So else, what we need to do is we do s list append the um, so if it's not true, we just append the single uh, string. So um, okay, let's try. Um, and oh, my bad. I, I should append and list 
Uh, I, I should append S, I think, right? Yeah. No, input string is not defined. Let's try to see if S list gives us the thing we want. I'm, I'm, I'm. I have a bad feeling about this. It's an empty. Oh, I have an update S here. So if it's S is not that, we have to update that. Okay. Um. So if it's not equal, we have to reset this S, right? Um, we have to reset this S. Uh, and let's open this. If it's equal, um, we have an S. Show him to list. This is very, um, okay. Let's read the code again. So, uh, for example, when I is one, um, without relying on debugger, I'm thinking, so when I is one, uh, we check this. So it's not true. Uh, we do that. Um, I think we need to um, append s that. Mm -hmm. So we do s is input string i. Yeah. Um, so for example, uh, length of input string. Is So uh, we have S list. I think I, I made a typo in uh, that. Let's see what this A, B, C, A. So B got omitted because uh, uh, we enter here. Um, so in the next iteration, it becomes S again. Uh, I, I think I should not. Uh, else, I should do s is uh, uh, empty string, okay? And uh, uh, if this is true, s join that, and I should use uh, s join that. And we initially initialize s as an empty string. Okay. So let's try this. Let's directly add a print to S list. It's empty. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's because we initialize, of course. Why is empty? Still empty. Um. So S join input uh, that. Okay. So for example, when i is zero, uh, we join the first one, which is a, and then we check. So apparently this is not, this does not satisfy. Uh, we go here. Um, so print. Why it's empty. So let's print s.
This is nothing. How about that? Input str i a b. So uh, why it's not join? I I'm I'm feeling confused. This will give us a right. Um. Oh, of course. I should do S equals S join. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Okay. Yeah. S equals that. Okay. Oh, it's still it's A B C A. Why? Um, so it's the last one is B, and S equal that, and we have to, uh, let's print this S here. It's still B. Um, so for example, um, So here we basically we aggregate neighbors. That's very interesting. This is what we need to do: is we、uh, need to aggregate neighbors. So, for example, we、uh, we write a for loop. Um, we write a for loop. For example, here S join with that one. Why it's still B B B?、Um, so, for example,、uh, right here the empty string. So,、uh, in the second iteration, it become.、Um, so,、uh, oh, after this, I need to reset this S. Okay. All right. Huh? So it becomes the else situation in the first iteration, and then when i equals, so in the zero iteration. Um, we have a, and、uh, in the first iteration,、uh, i is one, and then because s is resetted to empty string here, we we join here. So if、um, so, right now、uh, we we check this. Check if it's equal to the next entry next to it.、Um, and then we print, then we join this S. But somehow it's still B. Okay, it's、uh, oh it equals. So we printed B here. Why is B join B is still B? Let me try that. Aha!、Uh -huh. This is very interesting. How about A? Wait, what? I cannot use join. Yeah. Wait, what? Why are they wrong? So string join does not use this.
string drawing ah either of course um my bad it has to be an iterable so i haven't i haven't manipulated string for a while and i forgot this okay what i should do is i use that Still. So S is that S join test. Um Okay. So right now S join test. What what's the type of it? Is it a list? It's a string, yes. Uh, what am I thinking? Um Yeah, my bad. I should just uh use plus. The join is uh is something else. I think uh, I, I forgot it. Okay. Um, we should just use plus. Let's try this again. All right. Um, so right now here is VB. Uh, it has a. Uh, um, it has this a uh, three VB. Okay, this problem is uh, it's more difficult than I thought. Um, we need, so for example, here, I think I checked twice. Um, and maybe I should continue um, to see if it's still BBB. So if it's true, we should, uh, I think maybe we, we should use while loop. I think I think maybe this is better uh, with while loop. Um, so this is this is not so correct. Let's back to the while loop. So index is zero. We keep track of the index, and while. Um, and of course we have a s is uh, initially nothing. So while input uh, string with that and i is less than the length of the input string um, we s plus equal input string why okay why well, it's not true Oh, I think, I think, I think I have to not if, I have to put uh, this while loop in the for loop. Okay. Um, okay, now I got it. So right here, let's do a temporary index is J, which equal the I, and while, Let's do that, okay. So while j is less than that, and we change this to while i is less than uh, the length of the input string. Um, and i equals, i starts from zero.
So for example, in the first iteration, it's i equals zero, and j equals i. So j is a temporary uh, that. Um, So for example, I should do while, and while j is the same as the next one, we uh, concatenate the next one and j plus one, okay. And else, we just append it. And after we append it, um, we reset it, okay. I think that's a plan and then we plus one, okay. Let's try to see if it's good. Oh, it's not good. Index outer range. Um, while is that? Really? J equals I. Ooh, less, less than one. I think this should be less than one. It's still index outer range. Um, hmm. So I is five and we have BB, right? We printed BB right here. And then the next one, um, J equals I. And then we have to check, yes, I, then we have to check I, I, I equals J. Uh-huh. So J, um, so if it's else is, uh, okay, oh, now I got it. So I should equals J in this room. If it's not, uh, I should uh, also equal to one. Let's try that. See if it's good. It's still index out of range. Uh, here. So J equals I. Let's print J as well. Um, A is that, I is I. So first iteration, first iteration is I is zero, J is zero, we have A. And the second iteration is, so I is five, J is five, then this will be bad. Um, so I is five, I plus one. So last one is uh, like I becomes plus one. Why I is still uh, less than that. I, I is already not less than that, length of the input string, length of the input string is seven. What's J? So right, last one is J is this. Length seven, which means you have J is five, so uh, it's B, yes. Um,
Okay, the J here. J here is five, and then we print S is B B. I think the um the next one. This is what uh uh next one gets us in trouble. So I think if when I is uh uh become the last one. So while I is um, the index, the length of the string I is the index. So uh, if I becomes, so for example, the length of the string is seven, and I is less than seven uh, minus one, which is six. So when I is less than six. I don't get it. Print J is J and uh, uh, input string. So J is zero is that, and then I is five, J is five. So I is five, J is five. And uh, uh, then we have this. Okay. And uh, uh, let's print I, J, and S. Okay, now here is what with my bug. Um, I should do so I uh, J is plus one and when uh, J plus one so if J uh, becomes the length of uh, our input string. Uh, a length of the input string uh, minus one. We should just break. Have an infinite loop for now. While our uh, input string is that, if j is length of the string, so if j will break the loop, and while then there is no i. J is five, so I J is five. Um, here we have an infinite. So, for example, if we don't have that, um, then we encounter the problem of um, right here, which is a string out of index out of range because um, we increase one, so six. Um, Maybe I should do this. Six BB. So, um, okay. 
Um, but the, but in the end, um, we we have to still yeah as list append the current s. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Finally, I mean this function. Uh, this function is kind of not so beautiful, uh, not that beautiful. Um, and once we do that, okay. Um, once we do that, um, we start run through this string. So, so for example, we do for um, we do s i in enumerate um, s list so s is a string and uh, i is index so for example let's print s i we'll see that s will be um, a and b's and oh it's actually the reverse one the first one is index my bad so i s so index and s. Okay. Um, what we uh, what we want to do is if let's say if uh, um, if len of s is greater than or equal to two. Um, what we simply do is we basically we let s list of i equals. Um, So we, we simply let string length of s. Yeah, we should just let um, f len equals len of s. And then we check if this s len is greater than two. And if it is, we just uh, convert this to string and then we plus. Um, we just plus s. Uh, zero. Okay. And let's try. Let's print the S list once again. S list. And then lastly, we join S list. So. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, I spend lots of time on this. Okay. Mm. I think I haven't done this for a long time, so I may have some forgetting some of the most basic Python uh, syntaxes. Okay. All right. Let's copy uh, what's happening here. Let's see if. Uh, um, if we can, uh, if we can get uh, the correct encoding of the string, okay. Let's change this as to input str, and uh, let's fix the indent. So S list is that, and S is nothing, and we don't have to print, and we don't have to print, and we don't have to print. So after this, we'll get an S list, which is essentially here, and what we do is uh, uh, we simply run through the S list. And we do the encoding. Lastly, we return. We just join S list. I think it's a long solution. Let's run some tests. Test passed six out of ten. Oh my god. Okay. Um. 
My output is that. Oh, there is a one C less right here. It's because it's because it it puts in the. Okay, okay, okay. I should I should change this break to continue. Right. Wow. Oh, my bad. It should be break. S list appendix. And we break this while loop. Um why why have this while? Um I think I put some else here. Oh I think my else the it's wrong. Okay. My bad. Huh? Oh, my else is here. So if um while while this is true. So if while it's not that. Should I do this? Okay, there we go. But BB is printed twice. Um, okay, maybe I should do this. Okay, here we go. I think this is the way to go. Um, it should not be else. It simply should this while loop if uh, it's it, it, it is that, then we just do this. Okay. Let's run some test. Oh, it's still. So for example, um, it's, the while we break the while loop, right? So we change this to that. Um, okay, then C uh, got uh, um, so I is I is uh, uh, two J is. And i equals j, print i j is, um, is four, and I need, I need, um, I need i equals five. So, um, so for example, right here, I is zero, um, J is zero. Okay, I is two, J is two. Um, let's print that. And then S. Okay, so I is four, J is four, and BBB, and we need I is five. So uh, we break here, but we, we break only one while loop, right? Uh, so BBB, and then we break, we append S. And we print the S list here. Um, so when, when it's not true, um, 
I plus one. So, uh, I think the last I is five. Let me print I here. Yeah, so the last I is five. Then the last I is five. Um, So this length is mm, okay. Maybe I should do. Uh, maybe I should change. Uh, so I is five. Um, So right, right here, um, this is uh, my last letter. Um, I should, I, I, I should change the S. So if I becomes, if I become, so if I have a single out letter in the, in the that. Okay. So I think I should do uh, if. For example, I plus um, equals length of uh, input uh, string minus one. So we break here. So we missed, we missed this last C here. How, how can we avoid missing um, this C? Um, is maybe we should initialize this S as zero, okay? Um, the, we do, we don't do that and we just check that, um, and for example, for the first one, this will not be that, and then we append, um, the non-while version and we reset it. So we, uh. Oh, should not be. I, I think it should still be the original one. Um, maybe I should compare, maybe I should compare J to minus one. So this is maybe the way to go. Um, so while i is less than length of that um so we're missing the last c here uh, let me think of a way of not missing the last C. Right here, we break from this while loop and then we enter it here. Um, So you break this outer loop and uh, um, our S. So may, I, I should really change this to uh, J minus one and uh, to uh, J. Okay, and uh, we append J. So we, uh, we do I from zero. 
and uh, um, and S. We start from the first entry, which is zero. Okay. And I is zero. And while so we start from um, we start from J. So we we start from I. Okay. Um, and we let J equals I. And I, we let I uh, equals So we let J equals I first And then we let I plus 1 So for example, in the first iteration, I is 0 And we let J equals 0 Okay, and already I is 1 here, so I is 1 and J is 0 and here we compare um, 0 if it's a first okay uh, for example in the first iteration we would get a yes then uh, our s so we should get a plus one. okay and then we J plus 1 and we let I equals J um, and if that um, we break so for example right here uh, we break after we break um, so we should do um, and after we break um, so what we should do is uh, we do input string not just uh, that, we, we, we should just do that, okay. And then we initialize this actually before that. I think this is the way to go, maybe. Let's try to see if it's okay. String index out of range, so J is 5. Okay, I shouldn't. I shouldn't edit my original. Maybe say uh, at least partially working implementation. Let's just revert all of it. Okay, right now. Okay, this part is working. It's just uh, uh, not. Uh, working as intended oh. if it's minus one right now it's good yes but we are missing uh, the last cell which i tried to improve this by uh, changing the workflow So for example, S is the first one. So we're going to this loop. And we said uh, I equals J, uh, J equals I, and I uh, equals one now. Um, example. J is one and, uh, um, and S is becomes AA. So, oh, I should append S. Okay. Um, I think S should be that, right? And after that, um,
So for example, the first one is AA now. Um, but if there's a single one, it's uh, it's not okay. So maybe I should try uh, s equals input string j here first. And uh, uh, if this is true, if this is true, s is going to be updated and we're going to append the correct one. If it's not, um, we're going to get something. Okay, and I don't think I need this. String index outer range. All right. Um, can I clear? Um, remove all cells. String index outer range. I is one, J is that. So I is six, J is five, which is right here. And uh, so what happens is, um, String out of range, I, I is six, J is five, so I is six. I'm afraid I let you get Okay, let's try to print uh, every IJS. So we want to keep track of everything. Uh, so for example, right here, S becomes AA, that's right. And uh, uh, And I is three, I is four, J is four, um, S is BBB, and where did I print? Okay, I print the I here. So I becomes five, right? And then here J equals five. So J equals five, and S is that s is c uh-huh s is c and uh, um so j is five and and if j is So maybe I should just add um, if uh, so if J is less than strictly less than that uh, we we can continue in this. So right here J is five, right? Um, J has to be strictly less than that because we don't want to J finally there we go 
Okay. Now let me let me just copy down this workflow. New workflow uh, to here, which essentially we are getting this S list. Um, so let's paste it here and let's change the index. So we don't need this print. We don't need this print. Uh, we don't need this print. We don't need this print. We don't need this print. So right now, the, the code is not uh, beautiful. It's quite ugly because we have an if here. And uh, um, let's try run some test. Test passed three out of ten. So, for example, uh, output is A B A B. Actually, I should have this. Really, I messed up some of the original test. Okay, this is kind of normal. So a single letter got skipped. Input uh, str equal that. Okay. Let's restart the kernel. So add uh, this problem right here. Um, let's run here. So we have i is a one, j is zero, s is a, and we have uh, that and b. Okay. So right here. Um, So for example, um, I is three here. Okay, it got skipped. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, now we're in trouble is because B is being added twice. For example, right here. Um, so after, after um, I add this, I have to, uh, while this is true, uh, I have to do this, but while this is not true, um, can I do else? I'm not sure, but uh, S is that. Oh no, I cannot do this. Um, So for example, I added the extra B here is because if it's not true, I still did whatever is here. So in the original implementation, I have a reset process. 
which is right here. So after we open, we actually we have to reset it. But it it's not useful. It's because uh, we uh, we have already a right thing right here. So the reset procedure goes back here and the uh, uh Okay, this is this is weird. I mean, it's not weird, but uh, uh, this S here is apparently problematic. example in the next one is B I think the I I I equals J I I should skip that yeah so while J I equals J uh, I is 6 so for example I is 2 so right here I is 3 I is 3, J is 2, S is B. I should do I, right? Okay, my bad. So I is J, so S is J. So I is two, J is two, A is B, B. Okay, so now I is three now, uh, J is two. Um. So I is one, J is one, S is B, 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 C, A, B, 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 okay. It's not. So for example, when uh, still index out of range. J. J equals I. Okay. So for example, right here, it's I is I is three. But in fact, we have already done with this. Um, Maybe I should add the if here. So let's try this. A, 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 B, B, and C. Um, it doesn't work in that. I think uh, maybe I should do uh, that. J equals I. So here um, I should simply add if J is, maybe I should simply add here. So if J is less than that, uh, we are uh, for good. And now let's try this. Okay, this is much better. Um, I think my original implementation kind of works.
I think this reset. For example, right here. Um, I think we don't need this reset. We we can simply do that. And we don't need this initialization either. Yep. So, uh, all right, let's copy this to here. Change the indent. Remove the prints. And now let's if see if it go through the test. Okay, finally. Um, let's submit. It's not too bad. It's ah, oh, finally. Okay, solve the fifty task. And let's see some of the best solutions out here. Um. Okay, line encoding X is that group by S. So, uh, <laughs> Eater tools group by. You import Eater tools group by. Ah, uh, okay. I guess import an, a, an external library isn't considered cheating, but uh, we still, we still want to see a more elementary that. So they all use RE. Uh, let's see if I can find some elementary way of doing that in Python. Um, this one has a more elementary vibe. This one is more like uh, my solution. Um, but I guess it's... So, but I guess uh, um, it's not too bad. It's just my solution. Uh, kind of needs lots of uh, if and while. But the idea is pretty straightforward. It's uh, uh, whenever we encounter a consecutive same string, we put it in the same string and then we update the index here. Yeah, but uh, let's let's see what's next. Um, we can unlock this 150, why not? Let's unlock. Land of logic. Oops. Um, it has longest word, valid time, sum up numbers, different squares, digit file naming. Okay, Sudoku. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, here, Rainbow Chess Knight. Okay, so let let's continue next time.